everybody, welcome back. Um, I've been promising a tutorial for this for a while and I thought it's time to just get on with it. Um, these are um, inspired by this um, copy of the Somerset Studio um, with the tea bag art. Um, beautiful, beautiful. I love this magazine. Obviously, I difficult to get your hands on but um, that's what inspired me on this and it's just another great way to use up some of our scraps so there's a close-up of it and I've made it with a little tag so I was just gonna do a process video today um, they're really simple you really don't need a tutorial for it but I know a lot of people like to see the process so here goes um, I've bought my tea bags from eBay. I don't like to promote eBay and I'm not if you can find them someplace else, great, but I couldn't, so I had no choice. They're three by four. Um, so if you're struggling to find these where you're at, you know, at shops, um, eBay definitely sells them. And they're three inch by four inch, and you you can convert that if you're in um, metric. So anyways, um, you can tea dye these ahead of time. Here's one that I have done, but for the projects that I've got coming up, um, I'm happy to use them undyed. Um, you know, so we're, that's what we're going to do today. So I haven't really planned this out, so We'll just see how it all goes. Um, one thing I would say is <clears throat> when you put this into a journal, um, if you want it to be two pockets, you know, from behind and then the tea bag itself, what I have found is that if I just cut myself a little scrap piece of cardstock and stick it inside before I start. Let me do that. Sorry, I should have had this ready. Um, I'm just going to guesstimate. Um, I found that this will help because obviously your glue, you know. Um, so if you want to do that, great. Now, some of mine, I haven't bothered with this because I knew I'm happy for it just to be a single pocket and particularly if you're going to run this through the machine um, there's no point in doing this step but we'll do one this way and then the other one I'll probably do put through the machine because I do like the stitching on it so anyways I found if you put that in there um, any glue that's going to seep through but you're going to have to keep that moving otherwise it's going to glue to it and then you got a whole other set of problems so anyways we'll try one um, this way like I said I prefer them with the stitching myself so I'll show you both ways but um, just any kind of papers I'm going to use some um, sheet music and to be honest that I'm just going to keep that like that. That's wide enough, so just get something on the background there. <clears throat> I'm using the 3-in-1 today because it does dry a lot quicker than the other glues, so just really, really lightly because you do not want this going through. It presents a real problem. So yeah, another day that um, <clears throat> I wasn't really sure what I was going to get on with. I've started so many things um, that I've got on the go, but I thought it would be really nice to, to just take a break and do, because I need to make some more embellishments. Okay, so we've got that, and um, here's one of my little junky trays. I've been cutting out um, die cuts, gosh, forever, and just whatever I haven't been using, I've just been shoving over. And sometimes I do this just when I've got some extra um, cardstock 
and you know just a little piece I'll just save the save save and then I'll run it through and get the little so I've got quite a few things um, that I've shoved in here so I just thought it's time it's time to use some of these kind of like that that's pretty too I don't know how I'd have I'd have to tear that I won't do that because I don't want to tear that piece um, yeah I don't know I just thought it'd be fun to kind of play around today and see um, let me get my ink do a little bit of distressing that one's been distressed let me get a little bit on this yeah these were a lot of fun to do and um, they're just so pretty in a journal I think um, and you could just clip these in or glue them in like I said there's so many things you can do with them um, so let's see I think I want something else in the back hmm, maybe a little doily I'm going to see if I like that or not. Mm. No, I don't, I don't really want that on there. <laughs> Gosh, it's been ages since I've done a tutorial. That's pretty. I wonder if I should use that. See, I've got all kinds of stuff that I've stamped and then found I didn't need. And these, I'll shove those over. Yeah, I went to a car boot and found all these. This was just a bag of um, beads, and I grabbed it. So I've dumped that in here, but I really, really need help with my um, charms. This is what I, you know, I aspire to do. Is I want to make some really pretty charms for my journals, but... Um, so I just keep buying beads and beads and beads and oh my gosh, I've got so many, it's just ridiculous. Um, and I don't know, I really, really don't know when I'm going to get around to um, taking the time out and learning it. Oh, these are pretty. I forgot about these. These were some of my, um, <clears throat> if, if any of you are familiar with Stampin' Up, you'll remember this die and I've sold that. So, yeah, well, eh, told you I'm terrible about that. I go through and clear out my stuff pretty regular. Um, and that was just one I had, but I think that might be quite pretty on there. I'll have to see if I can. Anyways, so just going to get started. Um, before I glue anything, I'm just going to place it and see if I like the way it looks. Because um, I'm thinking that that would be pretty but that I, I don't think that's gonna work after all let me just see if I've got another I had thought about this one maybe with a pearl because these pop up so um, it won't matter if they flatten but I would have to change where that goes so hmm Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. So this is how I work, guys. It's um, it's not a quick process. I think I start off thinking I'm gonna go one way, and then I end up with something completely different. So yeah, that's why I suppose I've probably hesitated on on doing many of these videos because um. You feel a bit pressured on screen. That's pretty. I could put that in there. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these. And now I've lost that doily because I'm actually thinking I might just tear that doily and use a little bit of it. It just feels like it needs a little bit more texture. Okay, I don't know where that's went. Let me see if I can find one. Okay, that's a 
little bit big. But we'll make do with it. If I can get these apart. These are so difficult sometimes to get apart. Because I'm thinking maybe just a little bit there. So anyways, trying to talk and create is a struggle for me. Um, I'm just going to cut that, I think. Yeah, it's a challenge because uh, I get totally, uh, you know, focused on what I'm doing. This is probably going to come apart really easily now that I've cut it, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so, let me just get that down and then I'm going to distress that a little bit. I really, I know I keep saying it, I really got to get one of those little precision um, glue. I think it's um, Cosmic Shimmer or something. They've got it in at my stationery shop in town, but I keep forgetting to go in and pick up one because I really don't need to be using all of this, and that's expensive glue, as you guys know. All right, so I'm going to keep that thing moving around because otherwise you're going to end up It'll end up getting glued to, to it for sure. I've done it before. Um, just going to distress these a little bit. You guys know I don't I don't like it. A lot of distressing on there. I'm pretty sure. I'm really really happy to have that somehow. And let me see if I like that combination, not really. That's pretty. I think I might try that. I don't know. I feel like there's just, I, I'm going to stick with this, this color. And then I'm going to come back and, if I don't forget, I'm going to put a pearl in the center of that just to give it a little bit of bling. That's been distressed, but there you go. You can see that. I hope this is close enough for you guys to see. I'm always concerned. I'll, I'll zoom it in a little bit more. But I'm always afraid that I've got it too close and I'll go out of frame. <clears throat> that on last. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I could put that in. That might be pretty if it's just tucked under. What do you guys think? For a bit more color. And then I can put a pearl inside that. Yeah, I think I will do that. Alright, so anyways, you can see these, these come together super quick. Um, and it is such a great use of just tiny little scraps of paper that maybe, you know, we've all got our favorite paper lines that um, every little piece we think, oh, I've got to hang on to that because it's, you know, it's just one of your favorites. So this is a really good use. I might put that on in a minute. Uh, sometimes I come back and just tuck them in. Because I want that in fact, I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, trim because I want, I want to have lots of texture on here. So I'm thinking I'll just, in fact, I'll cut that just a little bit bigger. Let me see. I've got lots of... Um, That's kind of pretty, isn't it? I thought that might be nice color. Yeah, I don't think that's going to stand out enough. I'm going to put that there. I'm just Well, the 
this is going to be this is going to be tricky. I haven't thought about this. See, this is where sometimes it's nicer if you can just stitch it because um, I've got a feeling that that glue. I'm just going to put a small bead of it and hope. that will grip enough. <laughs> yeah. Just have to try these things. And you could if you if you're not afraid of the dimension, you could put some dimensional tape behind this to make it stand out a bit more. Um but I'm actually happy to keep it like that. Let's tuck these in. I'm going to go ahead and use the big one. I didn't intend to, but I think it needs a bit more color. And then I'll tuck that one up in there. So let me grab my pearls. This might be too big, I'll see. Actually, I like that. with how that's come out. Um, sometimes I will <coughs> do something on the little um, uh, threads, but I think this one I'm just going to do, I found this little bitty tag and I'll grab a stamp set I've got real quick and I'm just going to put something, stamp something on there quickly. This is one of the stamp sets I've got that's got the tiny words. I love using these. You guys probably recognize that. That's a Hobby Lobby. Uh, got that back, I think, when they had that big clearance. Um, <clears throat> and it's been a nice set because I like the font on those uh, words. Sorry, let me get that closed up. So, this is some uh, early espresso. I love that color, and I've got to get a refill on this because I'm it's starting to dry up. So I've just stamped Sing on there, and I'm just going to tie that on the ends here. Just, you know, it just adds a little bit more interest. Oh boy. Sorry guys, I may have to do this off camera. Let me see if I can get it. Okay. Just to get that through. See if I can tie it in a knot now. I've not done one this way before, but when I spotted that little tag, I thought that would be cute on the end. That's sweet. Okay. Oh, I am happy with how that's come out. So see, and you can see how quick and easy, and look at all the dimension. That's going to be really pretty in a little journal. Um, so let me make a tag for this quickly, and we'll just keep the tag pretty simple because I want it to be... Um, 
a little space for the um, to journal on. So let me see. This may be a little bit too. Actually, that's that's perfect, isn't it? Quite happy with that. That's a um, Tim Holtz medium tag, so that's going to fit really, really nicely. And like I said, I'll just do something really simple. In fact, I think I'm just going to stamp something on the front, <clears throat> and then we'll put something up here. And let me dig through my stamps, guys. Sorry, this just shows you uh, I'm not that prepared. I just thought it would be fun to do something. This is my... Uh, this is one of the ways I keep my clear stamps stored. Um, it's not great. It's not a great solution, but it's um, it works for me because I, I can chuck this into a suitcase and um, and have everything there, you know, with me. I try to take as much as I can when I'm moving around. So. Um, what was I going to put on there? Let's see. That's flowers. Hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to come up with something that would coordinate nice with it. Um, let me look through some more. This is um, a set I've got. This is an indigo blue. I think I'm actually just going to put the feather with the little heart. I think that's kind of a pretty stamp. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I haven't used this much. Um, I like indigo blue stamps. They're, um, they're really nice, especially if you're really into um, you know, art journaling. Oh, you know what? I can't use this. I haven't cut these out. That's why I haven't used it. Sorry. Okay, back to the stash. I'll just use this little bird one. Okay. And then I will... How many times I have went to distress the edge, and this is my crumb cake, and if I have my espresso one open, I'll inevitably end up with that, and it's too dark, because I, I don't like um, my stuff, you know, I just like it lightly distressed, but yeah, I've done that many times. And this, I will tell you the story behind this because you're probably thinking, well, doesn't she know that they've got square ones to go with that? I um, have the round handle, but I left it when, when I made the move here, and I had already bought all of these refills, so I was immediately trying to get into getting some journals up and, and in my shop, and so I just out of necessity, I stuck this on there, and of course, it works fine, and so that's prevented me from even going out and getting the refills, which is ridiculous. I know it looks stupid, but it works, so there it is. <laughs> so that's the story behind that, but yeah, um, the handle is somewhere buried in a storage unit. Um, I really like this. Um, this is some trim I picked up. It's it's like a um, measure, um, yeah, measure tape or yeah, sewing tape measure. And so I'm gonna see if I can find that. I will use that. That's really sweet. Uh, here it is. Here it is. This is really cute. Um, and you can pick this up over here. Really reasonable. So I'm just gonna put a little snippet of that. Um, and I actually think I'm just going to staple it because I don't like the look of that. Yeah, 
You could run this through the machine and stitch that. That would be cute as well. In fact, I should have probably done that with this one. That would have been really sweet. But anyways, you can see super quick and easy project. Um, I'm I'm just going to carry on as long as you guys can stand uh, to watch it. I'll do uh, hopefully two more. So we've got that one. This is the original one. Um, and I'll just see if I can get a couple more done. And I'll try to do these, you know, just a little bit different if it doesn't take me too long to dig out stuff. So, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is one of my little files that I just shove scraps in. I've got scrap cardstock, um, file folders. I just shove it in here and then this is getting pretty full and it's about time. I will then spend a couple of hours running it through and, and doing die cuts. But if they're pretty big pieces, I've got some good sized cardstocks in there um, like these. I'll just carry on, you know, I'll keep those because those are going to be a good use. But if they're small, um, <clears throat> like these are off cuts of my file folders when I do journal covers. I'll just run these through and make tags out of them. So, you know, hopefully that's that gives you guys an idea. It just, um, you know, oh my gosh. I've been looking for this forever. And I thought it had fell behind my desk. And I was thinking my husband was going to have to help me move. Oh, yay, I'm so excited. I've been missing that tool. Um, so anyways, that's just another way, because um, I know a lot of people you know, make remarks, well, how can you, you know, it seems like you really make your journals very quick, and I don't feel like I do. I, th I think I'm fairly slow compared to a lot of people who've been doing this for a while, but um, these are just little things that have helped, is to just do things in batches and like this rather than just cutting out a tag and I'm not saying I still have to do that from time to time if you run short but it just makes um, makes the whole process a little bit quicker if you can do them in batches and I try to do you know maybe 50 tags or 100 tags I might try to just cut those out you know over a couple of hours on one morning and then the same with my um, tea dyeing of the papers. I do mine in batches now. Um, I used to try to do it each journal, but gosh, it's such a mess, and um, you just think, well, gosh, if I'm going to have to clean up the kitchen afterwards anyways, um, I'd rather make it worthwhile. So I try to do um, 300 pages at a time, and that will get me through for however long. You know, it just varies on how, ma how many journals I'm creating. Um, these are nice. I like this as the background. Um, the other thing I have done in the past is um, taken like this one. That's actually a heart that I've cut out on the die, die cut and that was the backdrop for that one. So there's lots of things you can do. Don't just get stuck on one thing and don't, don't overthink it. You know, it's supposed to be fun. I know sometimes you know, you're under pressure and you're just trying to squeeze in time here and there, but um, but it should be fun. We should, we should try to take time, you know, to do something for ourselves that we enjoy. So let me get that on there, and I think I'll just go ahead and get another one on this one because I, I want them all, I think, to be... Um, in the same kind of color scheme, I think. So let me just grab another piece. Yeah, you can see the glues come through on that one, so... <clears throat> hey everybody! Yeah, I think uh, my camera quit, so I don't even know where I was at. Um, I was in the middle of a story about uh, the fact that um, a lady I got to know um, had told me about um, Tim Holtz workshops 
and um, that's something I would absolutely love to do. It'd be amazing to go. Um, and she said he's he's a really really nice guy and a lot of fun. Um, so that's something that's kind of on my little <clears throat> bucket list. I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity or not. Um, but that would be fun, really, really fun. But um, what got me on that subject was the fact that I'd really like to go to another craft show. Um, it's been several years, and obviously now the things I'm interested in in purchasing are very different to what they were a couple of years back. So, um, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully something will be coming up very soon that's that's nearby that I can do. But yeah, if any of you have ever been to one of um, Tim Holt's workshops, please leave a comment below on what you thought. She was absolutely um, crazy over it, and she highly recommended it. So, <clears throat> so this one, um, totally different. Back to uh, the nature theme, I think, just because I was looking through at some of my scraps that I need to use. This is some of the cardstock from the um, 49th and Market, and as you can see, there's lots of little things you can cut out, so I just thought that would be good to use. I've got a little bit of the Tim Holtz paper. Somehow, I think I'm going to try to to use some, actually I like that with the wording on there. I'm just going to tear it so it's a bit rough. So yeah, just um, this will give you guys a, an idea of no matter what your style is, you know, you can make these work. I love the ones in that. <coughs> Somerset Studio Magazine. They are so soft and dainty. They're just gorgeous. Um, I'm just going to lay it. This is one of um, the cards from uh, Tracy Fox I purchased. And I think that's, I'm going to have that there as the focal point. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get my hands on just some more of those magazines as they are, <clears throat> they're just full of really nice ideas. They're not easy to get. It's funny, when I was um, in the U.S., I couldn't get my hands on a Daphne's Diary. Absolutely mad over those, obviously, after, um, if you follow Amity Bloom. Um, she's a big promoter of... Daphne's diary, so I went through the phase of that and just had to have those. And of course, now that I'm here in the UK and can't get my hands on um, the Somerset Studio, that's what I want now. So it just goes to show you, you're never, never happy with what you've got. You always want what you can't have. <laughs> this is just some trim I'm going to put on here. I'm going to have to have a look when I can, um, I'm ready to get to another uh, flea market. I'm going to have a look and see how long I've got to wait because it's been a while since I've been to one. I think November was the last one. I tried to make, actually I don't know, maybe I did make it to December. Oh, that's going to bother me if that's too centered. I don't know. This one, I'm going to look through and see if I can put maybe some kind of little quote with this one. It needs something, I think. Do more than exist. Oh, I like that. 
I'm going to put that down there. And let me see if I've got a little tag for that. Well, I can always come back and do that later, I think. Now, this is one of the um, tags I've cut out from that same cardstock from the 49th and mark it. I think that's what it is, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I'll just distress this a little bit. And I've got, let me grab my stamp. I love my little um, this is my little Tim Holtz butterfly stamp, and I need to clean my stamps. I just picked up um, some stays on cleaner yesterday, so I've got to get get these stamps cleaned up. Make sure that's inked up really, really well. This is such pretty paper, it doesn't need much doing to it, but I think that's going to be really pretty inside. I just need to put a little bit of trim. Let's see what I've got, guys. Um, told you guys, I've got a an old scarf that I'm taking apart and using um, and there it is and I've just been taking it and using it on uh, various projects I like that because that, that matches really nice it's got the um, kind of olive green and a little bit of that teal um, so yeah just you know when you're at the yard sales and um, car boots. Look around for, you know, scarves and um, anything that's got really nice fibers that you think you can use. Because you'd be surprised what you've probably got in your own closet that um, you haven't been using. Oh gosh, I hope I haven't let this... Uh, see? I didn't keep that moving. I was fiddling around with that camera and Oh, good. That one's okay. So, that one's ready, guys. There's a close-up. There's the little tag. I think that coordinated perfectly with that image there. So that's another one. I just, I'll just i have to add something, but I can do that later. Let's just carry on. I want to get these finished so you can see. Just completely different. Um, looks. So back to my Prima paper because I love this. I'm going to use some of this and I don't know if I want that. I think I'll, I'll see if I, it, this might be too dark. I might change it because I picked this out as well. I thought this would be pretty to put on there, but I'm going to have to decide which one I think coordinates nicer. You guys know I'm not that fussy about... I like I like the torn edges uh, on my projects. And I know it's not everybody's style. Some people, you know, that's just... they don't like it. And I get that because I'm the same with um, the really dark... I've got to close that. I'm going to end up using that again. Um, that's why I said and it, it's nothing to do with I think it's beautiful the um, the vintage you know heavily distressed on other people's work but it's just not what I'm drawn to um, personally and I understand that this for some people Maybe it looks too messy, I, you know, and I, I get that, and I respect that um, we've all got, see, that's, I don't know, I'm not happy with that being that straight, it seems 
I'm going to have to tear that. That's bothering me. Um, but isn't it nice that we can all appreciate each other's uh, differences on that? And Because there's so many different styles <coughs> for the junk journals. And I guess it's just a process you have to go through. Probably a lot of you can relate to this. Um, I like to try all of them, and I have tried a lot of different styles. And then slowly over time, you realize the things that you're drawn to. And this is where I suppose I've been at in the last year is, um, you know, obviously when you're trying those other... Um, one of the things I thought I wanted to do was the boho. Well, I went out and I purchased the Sari Silk. Um, and when it came in, it's very bright and bold. And it's not me. So I've now got to figure out what am I going to do with that. Because it's just not something... I'm. It's been sitting here for three months. And that tells you right there that it's not your thing if you've got stuff that's just sitting and you're not drawn to do anything with it I think that's you know your answer um, so I've got to now figure out well, what am I going to do with it because I can't afford to just you know give it away and unless you're a crafter you wouldn't want it anyway so um, but it's I can appreciate the boho for others and I it is beautiful I mean it's what drew me to thinking I wanted to do it um, was seeing what everybody else was but it's you know I it's not me I like the shabby shabby chic uh, rustic that's that's where my passion lies I think and this is where you gotta slowly start getting rid of the stuff that's not because what's the point of it sitting in your craft space taking up valuable room? Because <laughs> we can fill it up with stuff that we'll use. <laughs> okay, so I want to put some lace behind that. I think maybe some white. White lace. Let me see. I've got loads of stuff here. This was some beautiful trim I, I purchased back at my little flea market. Maybe something like that. And this, I'm actually thinking, this needs a button. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to do I'm just going to snip that there. This is a really, really nice old trim. Actually, I'm wondering if I should do it that way. So you can see a bit more of it. Oh, yeah, I think I like that better. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to put the little craft... Um, butterfly. I love that. And I think another thing I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to stamp Sing on here because I've still got that little stamp out. And let me see. I don't know. This isn't coming out that dark, but hopefully it's dark enough. There we go. You can see, sorry about that, I just hit the camera. Okay, so now I want to get this on so that that, I'm just going to put a little, I do my glue really, really thin and it will help it from oozing out as much. Probably going to have to put a little bit more here. This is one I think, I think this really needs a couple of little buttons just to finish that off. Yeah, 
I think I prefer the white. Sometimes you think, you know, because I, I thought the, the purple would be pretty, but I think it takes away from that because that's such a soft image. So I'm just going to put that on there. Um, and this is where you guys decide, does it matter to you? I mean, if I sew it down here, it's not going to affect too much, but I think I'm inclined to just run some string through that really quickly and just glue it because I know I've got this tag <clears throat> and I'm going to want that to come down. And if I sew that, that's going to stop that from coming in. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put that on later. But anyways, you guys can see that's, that's what's going to end up. Get that pulled out. I'll give you a close-up. That's how it's going to end up looking. I'm just going to have to run my thread through that. And I think, actually, I'm going to use... Well, you know what? What the heck? Let me just do it. Let me just do it real quick. I'm going to use some of this linen thread. I don't have a needle, but I think I can do this. Maybe. <laughs> so she says. I'm going to try to just do this by hand. Oh, I don't know. Can I do that? Probably not. Okay, let me get a needle. This is where you, sometimes you think you can make a little shortcut, but, but uh, gosh, I hope that's going to fit through. Let me check. How many times have you... Um, threaded your needle and find out it's too large to go through the buttonhole. I've done it many times. Because <laughs> I use, you know, bigger needles for the um, journals. Okay, let me see if I can do this. This is, it feels very unnatural doing it this way, not sewing it to something. But I'm hoping. I don't know. I may have done this backwards. I am wondering that because I wanted it to be tied off. But anyways, I don't know. There, that looks nice. I'm just going to tie that quickly. I use a lot of this linen thread. I love it. And I found a place I could get it here, which is great because uh, Stampin' Up! isn't very cheap for what you get. So I've managed to get these big bundles of it for, this, for actually less money than I was buying it off of Stampin' Up! So... Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to glue this. Um, glue that on there. And let that dry while we mess around with this tag real quick. Again, I think I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, I kind of wish... I'll tell you what, I'm not happy with that color. It's too yellowy, so let me... I've got another cardstock that I often use. Let me see if I've got a tag. It's more of a winter white. If I don't have any made, I may have to stop the camera and make, make up one. Yeah. Let me see. This is it. See the difference? This was from one of those manila file folders. This is just a nicer white, so I'm going to use that. Yeah, all of my ink pads are getting 
dry, I'm going to have to get some refills and get those filled up again. Okay, so here, um, I'll, I'll use a different stamp this time. I love this stamp, and it would go nicely with that, but just um, I'll, I'll go ahead and get a different one. This is another one I, I use a lot, Stampin' Up. I love that flower. It's um, just a really pretty image. really getting dry those stamps so yeah I'm just gonna put that on there and there you go and then on the back you could you could stamp something else if you want to I'm not going to um, with this I just now want to put a little bit of um, ribbon let's see I've got some ribbon here somewhere I'm so pleased. I've got this, um, and it matches the uh, Prima Lavender perfectly. Um, just love this seam binding. Uh, I've been thinking about adding some of that to my shop because I've had so many people ask me about it. But the problem is, as you guys probably know, the cost from shipping is... Um, so much that it just wouldn't be worth it on on only um, purchasing this unless you were buying it in bulk and I don't really want to get into that oh I like that I really really like how that's come out that's really pretty let me just cut a couple of um, got my little butterfly stamp here and I'll show you guys really quickly I just cut two of these and then I um, just dot a little bit of glue on one. That's all you need to do is put it on one and then take your string and uh, Run that through the center because I actually like um, I like to have the string hanging out at the bottom of the butterfly but if you don't you can pull it all the way to the end but because these are uneven it just looks nicer that way so pull those together it's easier than it that I'm making it look. <laughs> there you go. Just give it a little tug until, and then you can see that's. And now I'll just distress that a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of ink along the edge of this so it's not quite so white. I mean, you know, in hindsight, I didn't intend to do nature, but in hindsight, I should have probably grabbed the ones that were already tea dyed, but I didn't. And you can see it's, it's, it's not like it's really standing out a lot. So, here you have it. This one, you know, I'd already done. That one I've still got to add something to, and I will. But that's three, let me zoom in, three completely different um, looks. Uh, well, actually four. I mean, this one's very fresh and um, 
I don't know, kind of more contemporary to me. Then you've got the nature one. And then very shabby chic. And then then this this last one. Well, the first one we made. So there you have it, guys. You can see they're so easy um, to make. So get yourself some tea bags and grab your scraps and make some um, tea bag art. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I appreciate you guys stopping by today, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!